if you're allowed to use your calculator to solve equations, I'm going to show you some nice tips and tricks. Now, this isn't officially sort of in the syllabus, but oh my god, this is so important. <laughs> That's why I like this. I know it's an old meme, but I always like that picture of that kid. It's like, yes! Yeah, that's maybe how you feel. So let's actually first of all remember, like, what's an equation even mean? Equation really means, I mean, it means equal, right? I mean, this is, I know this sounds really trite, but what do I mean by equal, right? I mean, these two things are the same. So whatever's on the one side is the same as the other side. Um, if it's, let's say we, we think about a graph, because maybe we can actually graph things right here. It's, you know, where they meet. So, I mean, this is, this is really what an equation means, right? It's that equals. This is why we call it equation. So what? why should you care? Of course you know this. You're like, why is this guy showing me this? Let me show you why. Because if we think about what an equation really means, then there's a couple ways we can solve something. So I thought of the same example, and we're going to solve it two different ways. One by you know thinking of it as same, one by graphing. So this is really going to be the, the key to this, all right? So it sounds really basic, and I'm glad because it's, it's a base. So this is good. almost looks like a smiley face or something. All right, so let's first of all uh, solve something numerically. So we're going to use our calculator function. It depends which calculator you use. I'm going to show you how to do it with the TI Inspire, but the other calculators have other ways of also numerically solving things. For example, on the TI-84, it's called, uh, I mean, you can go to apps. I think it's called PolySmult2. Actually, maybe I should even write that on a second here. So I'll say that one. So for the, uh, let me actually just type it out here. So the, I just need a calculator here. So for the TI-84, you know, it's something, uh, I mean, you go to apps first, and then you go to something called, you know, poly, I think it's called P-O-L-Y-S-M-L-T-2. So it's like polynomial simultaneous equations. It basically allows you to do a lot of stuff you need, so it can solve things there as well. Uh, it depends if you're on the Casio or the Inspire or whatever, but I'm going to show you at least the idea behind it, because the actual doing it is, well, it's different. So let's see here. So let's try to solve for x in this example. We have a quadratic, so something like x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals x plus 4. So on the TI Inspire, we have something called numerical solve, and it seems like you're cheating. Okay, it really does. So I'm going to call it, at least uh, you know, for this one here, it's called n solve. It's going to seem like the magic solution for everything. There's going to be a but, so to speak. So we'll see here what I mean by that. So it's going to seem like that's your, where you're going to want to use all the time. But uh, I'll tell you why you shouldn't always use it. Because it seems like you're totally cheating. Let's actually use the calculator. Let's try to do this. So I'll open up my trusty TI Inspire here. I'll do you know new uh, calculator. And I'm going to attempt to actually follow this recipe. So I'm going to go, so that was a new calculator. Then I go to menu, at least on the Inspire. Then I go to algebra. And there I go to numerical solve. It's called nsolve for short. You notice it just opened up something called nsolve. Now it opens up a bracket. And the really important thing is you need to write nsolve like this. So I just want to show you. You're going to do nsolve. In this case right here, I would use this. I mean, that's at least the, the idea behind it. That's what we're going to use. So what I'm going to type here. What I'm going to have on my calculator, I'm going to say n solve. I have to put in the equation. Okay, so I would actually write like this equals x plus 4, but you have to tell your calculator which variable to solve for. Maybe there's x's, y's, z's, whatever. So you must do a comma x. This is so important. Now, it doesn't have to be a comma x, I suppose. It could be comma whatever. You know, if you've got something with p's and q's, you want to solve for q, fine. So you've got to tell it which variable to solve for. So you would do something like this. This would be the, the idea behind it. So I'll maybe put like a circle around it and say that's how I'm going to actually do it in practice. So let me maybe put a box around this right here just to show you these are the different ways. Let's do it now. So I'll go on to my trusted calculator. I do n solve and I'll just type this equation in. So I got to do an x. Keep in mind it could have been any letters, but you know I'll just put in the x. So I'll say x. Uh, what I need squared here minus 4x. All right, plus one. Now where's the equal sign? It's right here on this one. I say equals x plus four. Now remember, if I just press enter right now, it's going to give me some sort of error. It's going to say it doesn't know what to do. It's like, bah, because, you know, you need to tell it what to solve for. So instead, you put in the comma and you put in the x. Now it can solve for x. Hooray! And if I want to do it to three significant figures, I'd say it's minus 
five four one. So I'll say that's my answer. So x equals minus uh, 0.541. That will be my answer. All right. So x equals minus 0 0.541. And to three significant figures, I'm done. So hooray, hooray for me. I think I've done it right. Here's the problem, though. So th there are actually problems with using nsolve. One of the biggest problems is it only looks for one solution. It doesn't look for any more. So if there are more solutions there, it's not going to give them to you. It just says, here's the first answer I found. There we go. So uh, I think I have this right here. So yeah, so pros. Well, it's quick. It's almost too easy. You might be tempted to use it kind of always. Hey, I'll always do this. But here's the problem. This is a big one. This is a very, very big, important point here to make, okay? Is that it only gives you one answer. So if you know there's another solution, you know, then you're all right, okay? But it only gives you one answer. That is important, okay? So exclamation mark, here we go. That's important. So let's show another way. Remember I talked about graphing. So if I do this right here by graphing, let's say I take the same idea. This time I'm gonna use this property that, you know, something is equal. Equal means same on both sides. Well, that means I'm going to graph one equation on the left side. I'm going to graph the other part of the equation on the right side. So on the TI Inspire, at least, you know, let me just show you how to do that. But of course, you can do that on the um, on the TI 84 as well. You can just go up to, you know, analyze. I think it's calculate. It's called calc. So you calculate the intersection, right? So maybe I'll write that down there too. So on the TI 84, you know, you go to something called uh, calculate. And then you do, um, what's it called? I think it's intersection. I think it's like that. I used that one so much, I think it's that. There we go. So that's how you'll do it. Let's do it in practice. So I'm going to see this equation as the first one. So I'm going to separate them and actually say, all right, I'll make my first function. I think they often write it like this, like f1 of x. But I'm basically, I'm, I'm doing two different equations. Depending on your calculator, sometimes they call it y1 or whatever, but I'm making one equation called x squared minus 4x plus 1. I'm making another equation called x plus 4. And when they are equal, that's when those two things are the same. Therefore, I find the intersection. This is the key idea here, okay? I'm going to try to find that intersection here. So, all the calculators do this in some way or another. You just have to find out how does your calculator find the intersection. But you got to do a graph of both sides. So let me show you that. So on this one right here, I'm just going to open up a new page, which is up here. That's a new page when I open up a calculator, uh, graph, sorry. And my first equation, I'm going to make it, so I'm actually going to display the graph of x squared minus 4x uh, plus 1. Now, I know the shape of it before I start. It's a quadratic, so it should be a parabola, and it should open upwards because this is positive, so it should be something that sort of goes upwards. It might be shifted or whatever, and let's just see what it looks like. I press Enter. Yay, I have a graph. That's not that useful by itself until I graph the second equation. So on mine, at least, I'm going to press Tab. Uh, on the other calculators, you know, you can uh, go back and press Y2. There's different ways of doing it, but on this one, I'm going to say X plus 4. There we go. All right, I have two things. Hey, look at this. Do you see I can I can sort of see the graph here? In fact, if you're going to do it this way, a good idea is to show a sketch of the graph. So actually, you actually show it. You draw it. Watch this. So I go X. I say Y. I'm going to graph it. So what did it look like again? It was a parabola opening upwards. Start off over here. Went kind of down like that. So I'll, I'll try to draw that. Maybe I'll try to draw it like... Uh, in black, something like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. And the other graph was one that went like, like uh, this, didn't it? Something like that. Let's see. Is that what it looked like? Hello, there we go. Something like that, at least. Let's ask our calculator for where they meet, because where those two graphs meet, that is where they're equal. So the place that I'm interested in is right here. And right here and I only care about the x value so I want the x value here I want the x value here I can ask my calculator for that I mean not literally I guess but uh, here we go so on mine I'm just gonna go menu and I go analyze and then I find the intersection and sometimes it asks you for like the first graph a second graph lower bound upper bound it wants to know because it wants to know where are you looking I'm gonna say lower bound is over here upper bound is here they all do something like that do you notice I have minus 0.541 so 
So that's one of my answers, isn't it? So it's minus 0 0.541 to three significant figures at least. That's my first answer. But ho, 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 look at this. There's another solution. So that's why uh, this one right here, the other solution would be just as easy. You just do this again. So I'm going to analyze, do the intersection. This time I do it near here. And it's 5.54. So I put that in, 5.54. Do you notice then I've got both solutions? So that's much more useful. So just so you know, in case you need to know how to do this, that's how we did it. Here's the answer in this case. So what's the advantage to graphing? Uh, well, I mean, the disadvantage, I suppose, is it's slightly longer to do. Yeah, sure. But the pro is that you get to see all the solutions. I mean, kind of literally, don't you? This is very helpful, especially in trigonometry. So for those who are going to do lots of uh, that kind of stuff, let's say you have, you know, some sort of sine or cosine graph going like this. You want to find out how many times does it cross this in a certain window. Well, it all depends on your window. And you'll see, hey, look, it crosses here, 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 and so on. So these are very, very useful to graph them. So graphing, I think, is a very useful way to do things.